Hey, welcome to Biblical Parenting. Hi. Part two. This is session <laughs> two of six. So yeah. uh, we want to welcome you. We hope you listened to the first one. And if you did and you want to join our Facebook group, leave some comments. We're hoping to reserve session six for question and answers. So if anybody has questions and answers they want to put in that Facebook group, it's Trinity Church Parenting and the password is heart. Um, but otherwise, we're just going to get started on today's session, which is near and dear to my heart. It's called Parenting Along the Way. So, mm -hmm. you pray? Um, yep. Okay. Father, thank you so much for just gifting us with children. That because of our children, we are, have the great responsibility uh, of stewarding and ra raising up uh, young people um, who will be future men and women of God uh, for your kingdom. We pray, God, that we do not take it lightly, Lord, but we re uh, have these gifts in reverence and reverence mm. and take such good care of them. Give us the tools and the strategies to uh, bring him up in the fear and love for you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, this was kind of a rough week for us as parents. I mean, it seems like, well, I never really wanted to do a parenting class ever because, you know, kids have their own free wills. So, yeah. I think this week we had, it, it was good that last week we talked about parenting the heart and looking in the heart. I, we had a lot of opportunities. Um to look in the heart. So I, I am glad that, that we're able to do this together because it's helping us learn we are by no means perfect parents. Um, yeah, be careful not to jiggle. I noticed that the camera moved a little bit last time. So, okay, well, we're going to start our, our uh, biblical foundation of this lesson. Lesson comes from Deuteronomy chapter six. So this is um, one of the most um, probably one of the most, we would think like John 3.16 is one of the most quoted scriptures, maybe by Christians, but definitely in the Jewish world, this passage right here is, I, I would think it was probably the most recited, the most quoted. And um, Deuteronomy 6, we're going to read all the way verse 1 through 9 because it captures parenting so beautifully, right? You want to do it or you want me to do it? Go for it. Okay. Um, Deuteronomy 6, verse 1 through 9. Now this is the commandment, the statues and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son. So I just want to pause and say our ultimate goal, we want our kids to fear the Lord. We want them to love the Lord, serve the Lord. When we say fear, we don't mean like be afraid of God, but it just means um, to love and respect and honor him, to know him as he is. Um, ooh, I lost it. By keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. The Bible promises that if we keep the word of God, if we, his, his um, way of life that he presents for us, the path of life, it helps us live a long and fruitful, happy life. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. So milk and honey represent strength and sweetness. And if there was ever a perfect homage to the godly home, it's that it's full of milk and honey, meaning it's full of strength and it's full of sweetness. And I had definitely had some strength coming from my kids this week that wasn't the kind of strength I was looking for, but I definitely could have used more sweetness. Also notice that strength and sweetness, sorry, milk and honey are both used in other places in scripture to, to um, describe the word of God. In multiple places throughout Psalms, um, they talk about the milk of the word, oh, even in the New Testament, um, and your words are like honey. So um, the strength that they were, the Israelites were walking into a place that was literally full of milk and honey, nourishment for their bodies and nourishment for their souls. But also um, the word of God is instructing us that our own homes can be full of that kind of spiritual nourishment, strength and sweetness from our home, our children. 
and it's parallel to the word of God. We cannot have strength and sweet sweetness that comes from the milk and honey of the Lord without the word of God. Mm -hmm. So here comes the most famous part. Um, it's called the Shema in Hebrew. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So today we're going to look at um, discipleship is really the primary responsibility of a parent. Mm -hmm. um, it's our number one goal to disciple our children in the ways of the Lord. You really want to make them into followers of Jesus, which in the end we can't force them to do, but we can set them up. So when the time comes for them to make that decision, um, you've given them a lot of good foundation to build that, that house of faith on. So what do you think about that first, Kev? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a good one. It is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <laughs> okay. It is a good one. Okay. So let's really um, focus in on verse 7. Teach all these commands diligently to your children. And it's a good time to say, hey, are we teaching the word of God diligently to our children. We live in a society of hiring outside help. Um, by the way, so excited. Like we had an international audience for this last, last, you know, this is a part of our Trinity church in Cedar Hill, Texas, part of our uh, Wednesday night classes. We're not really able to meet together um, because of the COVID protocols and such, but um Doing his classes online meant we had a lot of a lot of a lot of your friends from Malaysia chimed in. So shout out to Malaysia um, and people in different parts of the state. So that was fun. Um, but here in America, and I think it's kind of common in a lot of cultures, we have become very accustomed to hiring or um, handing over our children for certain instruction from other people. For for example um education um most of the time we send them to a school um, tutoring or yeah tutoring yeah. um or sports if we want our kids to learn a sports you know a sport or a, a mu to, yeah music to camps and yep. stuff like that right uh, music specialized lessons coach, personalized coaching yeah, yeah all special coaching and then th this even kind of gets down to the church um it can be easy to say, I'm going to send my kids to children's church, to Sunday school, um, to youth group, and that's where they're going to hear the word of God. But the Lord never intended us to relegate and delegate the raising and the discipleship of our children to someone else. Now, that is not to say that we don't appreciate um, the effort of our teachers, our pastors, we love them. And your job as a parent, find a support system. Find people who love the Lord, who are specialized, maybe you know, in, in whatever way to help you um, raise your children. But in the end, none of them are going to stand before the Lord and for your children. You are. You're going to be the one that the Lord's going to ask. So I gave you this child, and what did you do with it? And if you say, well, I send them to Sunday school every week. I mean, our faith just can't be that Sunday morning faith, right? Yeah. I've heard the excuses of like, oh, I didn't go to seminary. I didn't go to Bible school. I don't have the, I don't even know where to start, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where classes like these uh, are tools to kind of help kind of give us some strategies and and tools to uh, where to go to find help and the the main thing about it is that the ownership of that discipling of of the ch of our children is ours as mm -hmm. parents the lord has taken this beautiful gift and has entrusted it to us elijah noah and joseph 
Those are our children. <laughs> As parents, and now it's up to us not to pass on like a hot potato, right, to mm -hmm. our pastors or Sunday school teachers mm -hmm. and saying, hey, you're the one with the seminary degree. You're the one with the Masters of Divinity. You know all this about Scripture. Mm -hmm. um, the process and journey of discipleship, because it is a journey, and there's going to be successes and failures, uh, but you learn through it, and you learn together as 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 a family, as a unit, mm. and that's 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 what it is. That's the you know that life together, journey together. You want your your children to be able to see successes and failures. That even when dad fails or mom fails in a specific area, they're willing to pick themselves up and then and then carry on. Or else how are our children going to learn resilience, mm. right? So good. So what we want to do with teachers, coaches, um, youth pastors, children's pastors, Sunday school leaders, what we want to do is create a support system mm. for our parenting, not a replacement system. Yeah. Um, if you need a nanny, get a nanny, but parent your child, right? Mm. Do be, be the primary voice in, in your child's life. So I just want to point out that the first institution of society that God created was the family. He created man and wife, husband and wife. It was that marriage. And the most fundamental institution of any society is the family. And I think a lot of nations today, we're finding ourselves um, in a crisis over and over again because the family has crumbled. Hmm. Like I think about... Yeah. Um, our poor teachers, we they keep going through um, educational reform after reform, and they're trying so hard. Um, they have such a heart for these children, and they're trying to fix yeah. fix the broken education system. But in the end, if the home is broken, mm -hmm. you're not having children who are in an atmosphere or a discipline or a life and that's able that they're able to learn you know same with our churches yeah. um when our churches become a place where we're working so hard to fix broken families mm. which is great and that's what we do but it makes it where we're not able to move forward and reach more people and bring mm. them into the kingdom mm. Mm. um it starts with the home that's right and you and you look at um like crime rates, and if, if you look at the statistics of who's in prison it's and, and how many of them are fatherless, it's astronomical. Mm -hmm. You know, the home is the foundation of our society. A healthy home means healthy schools. Healthy homes mean healthy churches. Healthy homes build healthy nations. Mm -hmm. So if you want a revival in your nation, mm -hmm. start in your home. That's so good. Build an altar in your house, mm -hmm. a place of repentance, of worship, yeah. of of studying the word, build an altar in your home, metaphorically, you don't have to actually get rocks and put a sacrifice on there, just to be clear, but make discipleship um, the primary objective in your home. And when we do that, we will also find that we're not losing 50 to 80% of our kids that are raised in church, mm. which is the statistic these days. Because when kids experience like a Sunday morning faith, every week it, it they don't know how to relate it to the real world but when they have been um baptized into a lifestyle of submission a love for god joy in the lord then it, that's a hard thing to leave when it's a seven 24 24 hour a day seven day a week mm. experience for them okay yeah. um you have like handwritten notes there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it was kind of along along okay. the along the lines of, you know, Psalms twenty four one talks about the earth is the Lord's, yeah, and hmm. everything in it. So uh, that right there establishes right who we belong to, hmm. and our, who our children belong to. They belong to the Lord, and the Lord has entrusted. His belonging to us for our care for mm, I see. 18 years or whatnot. Well, so as we're gonna keep parenting as good, after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 as stewards of this precious gift, it, it's not for us to just receive this gift and then eh, I'll take a look at it whenever I have the time. Mm. It 
it's something that is, has been entrusted into our care and we have to yeah. be so mm -hmm. yes, God. careful with it. Yeah. So if we look at this verse in Deuteronomy chapter 6, he gives us kind of, the Lord gives us a model for how this is supposed to happen. And Kevin, I really, I do appreciate, I love how you pointed out that you don't have to be a Bible college student. You might be a new believer. You might feel like you don't have any idea. You're not a good teacher. You don't have an adequate, adequate grip on scripture. You know what? Learn together. Mm -hmm. Start yeah. together. Yeah. Open the Bible and read together just a few verses and talk about what you think it means. Or, you know, and if you don't know, say you don't know. Yeah. And... Think about it, pray about it, ask about it, or just move on. You don't, you don't have to be an expert to write. And <laughs> so let's put some practical examples in there. Some things that um, I found helpful um, is to start little traditions in your home. Start little uh, okay. habits that your or that your children are accustomed to. Every night I read the Bible with my boys. If they go to sleep without reading the Bible and praying together, there's almost like something's missing. Hmm. Because it's it, they've done it ever since they're little, all the way till, you know, they're teenagers mm -hmm. now. And they, they're they like, Dad, are you coming? You know, if, if, if I'm late. Uh, and they're like, are, 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 are you coming to pray with us? Are you coming to read the Bible uh, over us? And so, yes, sometimes it might feel very repetitive, but that is a tradition that you start with your family mm -hmm. that that your children now um find yeah um stability it's true faithfulness children love routines and something they can count on um so actually that tradition started because um i was exhausted when the kids were little i had like three under five years old and I was exhausted by the end of the day and I just couldn't put that like putting them to bed is this whole thing and he'd been at work all day so um I would go do the dinner dishes and and he helped me out because I was just like I cannot take one more minute of kids right now <laughs> so and it became a beautiful thing and he they've actually read um several books together like yeah. just a few pages a night missionary biographies great men and women of faith mm -hmm. heroes of the faith which also gives them like stuff to talk about. Yeah. So what I love about that, Kevin, is when it says in Deuteronomy 6, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, mm -hmm. when you lie down, and when you rise. So you're like doing that literally when they lie down at night. You're mm -hmm. giving them the word of God. Mm -hmm. I love this verse because it points out that all of our whole day, we should be pointing kids to the word of God, the nature of God, um, char character that you want to see based on scripture, that you want it to be developed in them, how to relate to one another, how to love one another. And it becomes a natural flow of your life. This mm. is not a Sunday morning faith. This mm. is the flow of our life. This yeah. is who we are. Yeah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. Um, so they say here one more time, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise, this is when you talk to your kids. He's very specific. This is when you talk to your kids about me, basically 24 seven, all day, every day. What I love is I see Jesus did this too. And um, all through his discipleship, um, discipling his, his 12 that yeah. followed him. Um, Mark eight twenty seven, Jesus and his disciples went on to the village around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? What jumped out at me is that little phrase, on the way. Um, and I just, that's why I, I love this teaching and I wanted to name it Parenting Along the Way. Mm. Because what we see with the life of Jesus is he just lived his life with his disciples. And along the way, he would teach them about the things of the kingdom. Yeah. For example, he would say, Think about the sparrows. Look at that bird. And I don't think it was just like he thought he was laying in bed or working on sermon prep thinking, well, how can I explain the kingdom of God to my disciples? I actually think that they were just like, he was like, see that bird right there? 
the Lord cares for you like he cares for that sparrow. Or maybe they were walking around some beautiful flowers, springtime, you know, blue bonnets in Texas. And he's like, do you see those flowers? I'm going to tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed in such fine splendor. And if the Lord cares about those flowers, how much more do you think he cares about you? Mm. And I know he was preaching, but he didn't get real preachy. He just let the life that they were in become um, a story, a, a, a way to point them to Jesus, uh, to, to the kingdom of God, right? That's so good. Um, he's like, see those people? Let's watch these people put in their offering and see, and see what happens. Or kids run by and he's like probably laughing with them, playing with them, talking to them, or just like enjoying how cute they are and telling his disciples, do you see those children? If you want to go, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, you're going to need to become like those little children. He used whatever was around him. Yeah. And because the kingdom of God was on his heart and on his mind all the time, it just flowed out. It just like a bar of wet soap. It just couldn't, couldn't keep it in. It just kept slipping out. So you know, Bible degree needed. You no Bible degree needed. And, yeah. yeah. Um, food. He would be like, see this bread? I'm just like this bread, bread of life. Yeah. I mean, they were probably eating bread at the time. Like food is such. And so when we, when we have opportunities, you don't have to wait for a big moment. You don't have to, sometimes parents get really frustrated. And I know I do this all the time and I've heard it over and over. Like, okay, I plan to have family devotions. Mm -hmm. I know we need to do this. Mm -hmm. So we get all the kids, we line them up on the couch I get the Bible out, maybe we'll sing a song, I don't know, and I start to read a chapter. Well, the two-year-old suddenly, ha ha you know, starts picking his nose and then it starts bleeding and then you're like, okay, let's shove a tissue up there so I can get through this passage. And then, and then the older two start kicking each other and they're not used to sitting so long and it becomes this super stressful thing. Mm. Family devotions are amazing and you should absolutely do them. But we don't have to make it this huge event mm -hmm. when we talk about the kingdom of God. Yeah. It just becomes your way of life. Yeah. If you take your three-year-old to the grocery store with you, you probably aren't right now because you're keeping your kids at home away from, away from infection. But you say, look at all these kinds of apples. Am I boring you? No, no. <laughs> just had lunch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, and then your husband falls asleep in the middle of your teaching. <laughs> My eyes are open, I promise. Okay. So you say, look at all these apples. Isn't it neat that God ha had made so many different kinds of fruit and all these different kinds of apples? Isn't God good? Or you're cutting that apple at home and you say, isn't this sweet? Knowing Jesus is very sweet too. Mm -hmm. Or... It's nice to be sweet to our friends. When we're kind to our friends and use kind words, it's like it's like a special, like giving them a sweet treat, like an apple. Mm. Or you cut that apple open and you say, see these seeds? These seeds are so little, but when you plant one, it becomes a great big tree that has lots and lots of apples on it. And the kingdom of God is like that. And so you, you, you use these little things around you um, if you have ideas, you know, no, that's, chime in. Um, that, that's that's perfectly. I mean, that's that's perfect as an example because uh, oftentimes as adults we think of discipleship and we think of this big, you know, process of going to Sunday school and going through curriculum and which is book. great and we do it. But what you just outlined and the way Jesus do it, discipleship mm -hmm. along the way, that's how children just ingest that and mm. they process and they think it through. They're like. They're thinking of the lilies in the fields mm. and how pretty they are, the sparrows. And, they, and then, oh, God takes care of that and he must take care of me. And, and that is discipleship along the way. And mm. it's not hard. Yeah. Let them see mm -hmm. that you read the Bible. Yeah. Let them see that you pray. Oh, my goodness. One of my favorite families, um, the Haney family, uh, their worship leaders at choir director at uh, Trinity. They have a son by the name of Camden. And worship is a priority in their family mm. so what they decided to do 
even though there's great worship in kids church and preschool we we love our church mm -hmm. they would bring camden in to service to sit through worship from the time i mean his whole life mm -hmm. baby baby um and i'm going to tell you that boy is 14 now and he's a worshiper mm -hmm. He, you see him in service now. I sat by him uh, last time I was in church and mm -hmm. he, I mean, he's going after God mm -hmm. because this was a priority in their home. Worship, worship is something they do together. It's, mm -hmm. it's an atmosphere. It was very that natural. Created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I love yeah, that. It's it so very good. natural. So like the Greek philosophy was always, um, in contention with the Hebrew philosophy. And so the Greeks would educate their kids by saying, let me tell you everything I know. You are a bucket and I will fill you with all the knowledge in the world. The Hebrews said, you know what? I'm not going to teach you what I know. I'm going to teach you who I am. Mm -hmm. And so they would bring their children, um, the young men, the sons would stay with their moms until they were weaned. Mm -hmm. And then when they, they were able to, um, when they were weaned and able to take care of them, uh, feed themselves and all that, they would, um, <laughs> That was a very distracting thing on the phone. Um, the The fathers would take them. Fathers would take them into their workshops or onto their fishing fishing boats and say, "Let me teach you um, how I'm going to replicate who I am." Mm -hmm. And and so they took over the education as that at, at that point, saying, "I'm not going to teach you what I know. I'm going to teach you who I am." So the point is, let your children see who you are. Yeah. Let them bring them into church with you sometimes. We love our children's church. I I am a high level volunteer um, in our children's ministry because I believe in it. But I also we have a rule that our kids have to sit with us through service because we want them to see us and how we worship the Lord in service. Mm -hmm. But I also make sure even though I love my quiet time in the morning um, Kevin takes his stuff out to the back patio and I like to kind of nestle away in my room, but I make sure that they see us reading scripture. They see that we take the time for that. And when I, ha when we hear a need, um, when a need comes up, we stop and we pray all the time, yeah. like probably two or three times already today, we've just stopped and said, this is a concern. Yeah. And right now in the current crisis we're living in don't let your kids hear you be fearful or complaining all the time about the word world we're living in mm. yes some of us are on mandatory quarantine or lockdown or isolation or you have to wear masks and you don't like it or you can't go or or um there's things happening um racial tensions and all these things let them hear you stop and pray mm. when the mm. news comes on mm. or all of this stop and pray together about it mm -hmm. um that needs to be your pattern of life i think i kind of lost <laughs> <laughs> i kind of went off script <laughs> well yeah okay so how do we keep how do we make sure that we're parenting along the way right mm -hmm. um kevin talked about rhythms set up rhythms um and it's a lot easier to start these when they're young because you might get some resistance as they're older. Mm. But if they're older and you're trying to start a rhythm, persist. Mm. Yeah. Like if your doctor said, hey, they need to start, brush, you know, taking the dentist. You know what? They're not brushing their teeth. So you would persist in making yeah. them brush their teeth regardless of the fit that they uh, that they put up. Right. Because mm. you wouldn't be a good parent if you were like, you know what? You don't want to brush your teeth. That's OK. You can have rotten head. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> like we wouldn't do that, right? Because we love our children. So even if there's resistance, persist in love and joy until it creates a rhythm and they learn to expect it. He talked about praying over them at night. One of our friends on our Facebook community, uh, the Blankenships, they do daddy daughter dates all the time. This is an incredible way to disciple your young ladies in what to expect mm -hmm. from from how to be treated by a man and also just to let them know that you are loved by your mm -hmm. father. Um, beautiful traditions. They say it, it takes, if you, if you have a holiday tradition, it only takes two years for a holiday tradition to be established as, Oh, this is a tradition. This is something we do. So you do it the first year, you repeat it the second year. Now you have a tradition, yeah. you know, dinner time, mm -hmm. huge tradition, mm -hmm. huge rhythm. Mm -hmm. It can be a stressor, and we'll probably talk about this more. I know it can be a stressor. Mm. 
But regardless of how your house looks and regardless mm. of what you're serving, mm. make time for dinner as a family. Mm. If not every night, then at least several times a week. Mm. Three times a week would be great. Mm. Four times would mean you're doing it more often than not. Mm. Um, clear off the table. No devices. Everybody's puts that out. We light candles. I don't care if they're eating a bowl of cereal, which does happen sometimes. We're going to have candles because it just tells everybody this is a sacred place. And we're creating conversation. Um, we're creating discussion. And we make that flow. We make that easy. And I know sometimes it's hard. When you have a little one in a high chair, um, you just make the decision that's best for your family. Bring the, bring the baby in for a little bit um, if you can. But if you can't, wait until they're old enough to sit. There's no pressure, just mm. grace. Mm. But try to make that, um, Try. they say that kids who eat together at the table, like um, they're, they are less likely to leave the faith. They're mm. more likely to excel in school. They're mm. less likely, they're less likely to engage, to, to become pregnant premaritally, like as teenagers. Mm. How about that? Mm. <laughs> Mealtime is so important together. Um, it's a great, and you start off, we start off every time saying, how was your day? Mm. And we ask daddy, because he's been gone all day, how was your day, you know? And then um, sometimes it's awkward, like, what are you talking about? So we actually purchased um, some question, like dinner questions. So they're like, you know, if you could travel through time, what? but just keeping that flow of conversation going captures their heart. And we mm. talked about that last week, capturing their heart. And it also, it's a great time to say, so what are you reading in your Bible, kids? Mm. What is the Lord saying to you? Let them, let them come and, and lead it, lead your devotion. If you want to end, um, um, you want to end your meal with a scripture verse, if you want to learn verses together as a family, mm. another great idea, long or short. You could, if you have kids that are eight, nine, 10, you could start learning a whole, start with Psalm 23. They'll be so proud that they learned a whole chapter. Right. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, we're right at the 30 minute mark. We're right at 30. Mm. Um, creating that atmosphere where you talk about things all the time. Um, well, I want to mention yeah. that during dinner time, if you know, if you're a family that's not used to this, you know, you haven't done it in a long time, and your kids are like, "Whoa, what's with mom and dad? What are they doing? They're trying to start new traditions." And that's where some tools are helpful, like some of, some of those things, like what she was talking about. This little. Um, there's we have a pack of cards that has all these really interesting discussion questions. questions discussion questions that kind of bring out a discussion among the table so you know you don't just sit around and you're just eating okay so how was your day good and what you, you learn know, in school nothing yeah <laughs> right so there's like questions that go like what's if you were on an island what is your favorite ice cream flavor that you take with you or something like that you know or, or what survival tool would you have with you and then you start hearing the personalities and the uh, just the ideas that the, the children have or mom has or dad has. and, and the, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so the point is, is that we parent along the way. Yeah. Make use of little times, like time in the car. I know in, 20, in 21st century, we spent a ton of time in our car. Make use of that time. Mm. Um, make it a good time to talk or listen to audiobooks that that share stories that you can, um, um, heroes of the faith, or just stories of hope and redemption that give you something to talk about. Um, the adventures we've been listening to um, through book, on, they, you know, they give us so much to talk about as a family. We also love Adventures in Odyssey um, mm -hmm. for that older elementary, early yeah, uh, age. I focus they on love the that. Yeah, that's their audio it's a subscription dramas. subscription online. Yeah, there's a, you can find some free trials and stuff to see if you like it, if it's a good fit for your family. Um, the key is deliberation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, discipleship is not just, it's not going to just happen on its own yeah. as if it was, you know, like we talked, did we talk about the wild garden? It's not like you just throw a bunch of seed in the garden and you're like, okay, hey, flowers grow and you hope that it just grows. It's not, it's not, it's, and, and you leave it untended, mm. right? It, we, we, we think weeds will not grow. We think and choke out the flowers that we threw out, the seeds. It requires that daily, mm. intentional, deliberate. Um, so, mm. you know, it's easy to give them a device or technology and say, hey, go watch Netflix and, you know, enjoy your cartoon and 
That way I can have some peace and quiet. But discipleship requires that investment. Yes. Mm, That's yeah. good. It is good. And we set up that atmosphere where talking about the things of God is so natural because we do it all the time. We pause, we pray, we use scripture, um, we read. So we they do Bible at night together. I read with them at breakfast. Um, it's just a constant flow. And it starts when they're little. Yeah. You know, and um, we have a good friend at church, um, Lori Allen, and she's a, uh, sh she's a psych Legal psychologist. Yeah. And so one day I was like, my kids were getting that age where I felt, I was like, I need to talk, give them the talk. What do you do? And she was like, it starts when they're tiny. You don't, you don't wait for this one big talk and just overwhelm them with an intense amount of info. You talk about you talk about age appropriate things like it's natural this whole if you don't know what we're talking about <laughs> but she's like we talk about it all the time from the time they're little we're just open you want to be and, that influence yeah and, to bring yes. that information and so, not let them find that out the from point is is friends. we don't store up all of our our faith for sunday morning or yeah. for like one big okay they're going to camp i really hope they get saved you know, what a joy and a privilege to be the one to lead your children to the Lord, to set them on the path of life. There's no greater thing. Yeah. So um, whatever it is, if it's good character, if it's loving one another, if it's a knowledge of God, um, make it a part of your life. Be mm -hmm. missional. Um, do ministry together. Whatever you can do. If you want to, uh, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll leave that for another one. Um, we're running out of time, so... We're just going to wrap it up and say we love you. And there is a battle right now. There is always a battle, but right now, you are probably feeling it. And the tension might come out in your home. The Holy Spirit says that he has given you everything you need for life and for godliness. Mm -hmm. Not just you, but the life and godliness of your children. And mm -hmm. if the Lord thought it best, to give you those children, he is going to give you the patience, the wisdom, yeah. the overflowing yeah. love and kindness, the strategies that you need to parent them well. Mm -hmm. But it will mean that you have to give up some selfishness. You might, you need to be very diligent. Like it says in Deuteronomy 6, teach them diligently. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm just going to pray over you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for the parents who are watching. Lord, I pray that you will equip them with strength, yeah, yeah, my God. Yeah. You will give them hope yeah. and a future, Lord, yeah. where they feel overwhelmed, where they feel discouraged. Lord, I break off guilt, oh, parenting guilt in Jesus' yeah. name. Yeah. I break that off and I say, let God arise yeah. in families, in yes. parents, in homes. I pray for strength mm -hmm. for single moms right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. single dads. Mm -hmm. I pray for strength. I yes. pray for a surrounding support system. Yeah. But above all, that you would be the foundation, Lord, that yeah. their homes are built on. Yes. Lord, I pray for children who are overwhelmed in this time. And they're being parented by distracted or overwhelmed parents. Let God arise yes. and let his enemies be scattered. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, we hold these precious children that you have given to us and we steward them. Mm. We, we will invest in them and we will do our best knowing that you love them and want them to be where you want them to be even more than we do, Lord. Yeah. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we just um, bless you and we bless the parents watching. God, yeah. you're a good, good father. Yes. So in Jesus' name, we'll see you guys next week. If you want to join our Facebook group, we've literally had like two people so far, but we're just getting started. <laughs> Say so. it again. It's, how did it get? Uh, Facebook, Trinity Church Parenting. Password is heart. And we'll take questions, answers, um, we discussion points and stuff like that. We love to hear from you. So. God bless you guys. Bless y'all.